In today's video, I'm bringing y'all along with me on the bidding process for this three-story parking garage. Now, before we get too far into the video, I just want to say thank you to everyone that has been subscribing and supporting the channel. Uh, thank you for all the support that we've been receiving. I've been receiving a lot of positive feedback. A lot of you guys have been reaching out to me. Uh, and I really do thank you for all the positive comments that we have been getting. Also, if you're subscribed, don't forget to hit the notification bell icon. That way you can be notified of any new content that we drop and you can be some of the first people to see any of our new videos. Now, let's talk about this job. We actually got this job. Um, we did a bid for this property last month and they actually accepted our bid proposal. We were competing against two other companies to actually land this job. But there are some weird requests that I got from the maintenance supervisor that I wanna kinda of just go over in this video. As you can see, there is a lot of paint on the ground. But initially, whenever I first got there, the maintenance supervisor only wanted me to submit a bid to essentially patch all of the areas where the paint had initially faded or chipped off. And my initial response to the maintenance supervisor was that if you only want me to do some patchwork and just fill in the areas that are faded, then you would have to find someone else to do the job and I would decline the service. For the simple fact that, as you can see, there is a lot of paint on the ground and this is in a parking garage. And a friend of mine who was actually helping me on the bidding process, because you can see, obviously there's a lot of paint on the ground and the lines are not your average four inch wide, 18 foot long lines. They're very wider, it's a lot different. So I actually reached out to a friend of mine and he actually informed me of a lawsuit that he's actually going through right now because somebody allegedly slipped on one of his parking lot lines that he did, uh, I think three or four years ago. And in his area, I guess there's a statute of limitation, uh, in regards to contractor responsibility. So he was helping me on the bidding process and I was telling him about the dimensions of the lines and so on and so forth. And he told me right off the top when I showed him a picture of how wide the lines were, he instructed me to add an upcharge for a uh, glass bead mixture. And if they turn it down, then that's on them. At least I cleared myself of the liability if I offered it. Well, luckily, I actually shot really high on the glass beads, and they ended up accepting it, which was awesome. So you can see right here, there's a lot of paint on the ground. Now, these lines in between the columns, as you can see right here, are 1 foot by 15 foot uh, long, which is a lot. The column lines, as you can see right here, to the left and to the right, the column lines are three foot by 15 foot. So there is a lot of paint on the ground. I'm not sure who decided to do this or uh, who was in control of the layout. Nevertheless, there's a lot of paint on the ground. Now, the first two stories are like what you're looking at here on the ground. Uh, there are two stories where the lines look like this. And then the third story is like six handicaps and then four access aisles. So the third story is really not that bad. So as I'm looking at this and I'm trying to estimate this in my mind, I'm trying to do it where I'll still generate a considerable amount of profit, but I also want to offer my customer a high quality product. So I went back and forth, showed a lot of people the pictures uh, and asked them how much they would charge, gave them the dimensions. And I ended up charging about $12,900 for this job. Uh, that's not going to be profit, of course. My paint cost is about 
two thousand dollars and i think the glass beads will be a couple hundred for some bags of the glass beads will be a couple hundred dollars so i'm looking at about maybe i say about a ten thousand dollar profit pretty i mean a pretty good job it'll take us i say maybe uh three or four days they want us to do it at night so we actually haven't started yet and i planned on actually showing you guys this video but it took them a long time for them to actually accept our proposal so i didn't want to release this video of our walkthrough unless they were going to accept our proposal nevertheless they really liked the way that our proposal was structured they accepted the bid and i said if you want me to do the project you're gonna have to make it where i do all of it i'm gonna have to restripe all of it i can't just patch it in there and uh so for the most part i'm excited for the project i think we started in um in two weeks i actually got a phone call yesterday from a financial person that gave me the confirmation to go actually pick up the check for the deposit for the supplies so i just wanted to bring you guys with me show you kind of what i've been working on the weather in oklahoma has been so crazy because we start off with like a 20 to 30 percent chance of rain and then it rains and then for a few minutes and then the ground is wet for an entire day so i don't want to take any chances i'm not in that much of a rush that i got to take chances to try to get jobs done i'm not in a rush because if the paint gets wet on the concrete a disaster takes place and it just looks unprofessional i don't want to do that so as you can see right here there's a lot of paint on the ground i think this job will probably take us maybe a week or a week or two shouldn't be too difficult i'm gonna have a couple people helping me however i did want to say this I want to know what you guys think. You see the lines are so wide. Should I, and I'm just asking some of y'all's advice, leave a comment down in the comment section and let me know. Should I spray these down or should I detach the gun and then stencil them by hand? Uh, the reason why I'm asking that, some of you will say, well, duh, you should just push it down. The reason why I'm asking that is you can see whoever did this before striped that and there there's a line that goes in between the lines. I just don't I don't I don't like that. Maybe it's the only way to do it. I don't know, but I just I don't like that. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. Uh I got some work I'm gonna go do tonight. I got some fire lane to do tonight. So thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Alright, out.